The worst diseases during the Civil War was dysentery. Uh, victims of dysentery get severe diarrhea with passage of mucus and blood. This disease can be caused by several different bacteria. Another one was typhoid fever, which was the second highest killer, and it's also known as camp fever, and it can be caused by, again, several different types of bacteria. It's a very severe fever, an intense headache and rash, and delirium, trans and it's transmitted by body lice. Uh, the third was ague, which is a bad fever with a cycle of chills and sweating. During the Civil War, the experience and training of doctors was not well regulated, and the Union Army only had 98 doctors registered, and the Confederacy had only 24. Infection was a huge problem, and to make matters worse, doctors thought pus was a good sign, and they transferred it from patients who had it to those who didn't, so they infected another patient. So, what was the first antibiotic, and how was it discovered? Uh, 1928, penicillin was the first true antibiotic we discovered. It was discovered by Alexander Fleming, and the way he discovered it was by growing mold that was called penicillin and then finding out that bacteria died when around it and it is important because it kills many harmful bacteria, which prevents disease and infection and World War II helped to photo the penicillin uh, penicillin was used to treat wounds and it helped people by saving their lives not only during the war but normal people that were not in the war that just had infections and they it killed staphylococci which is a um, bacteria that's harmful to the human body. And other antibiotics are uh, sulfadimidine, which was discovered in 1942, sulfamerazine, which was discovered in 1943, streptomycin, which was discovered in 1944 and is the first amino glycoside, sulfadiazine in 1947, chlortetracyline, which was discovered in 1948, which is the first tetracyline, Chloramem chloramphenicol, the first M amphenicol, Neomycin, oh, and that was discovered in 1949, both of them. Oxytetracyline was discovered in 1950, as well as penicillin G procaine. And erythromycin, the first macrolide, which was discovered in 1952. When did hand hygiene become a common practice in the medical healthcare system, and why is hand hygiene important in reducing the bacteria and virus infection? Are there other times or situations when hand hygiene is important? Semmelweis demonstrated the puerperal fever, also known as childbed fever, was contagious and that this incidence could, drastic, could drastically be reduced by appropriate hand washing by medical caregivers. He made this discovery in 1847 while working in the maternity department of the Vienna Lying In Hospital. Explain how antibiotics work in your body and why are they so important to our lives today. Identify at least five different antibiotics and their specific bacteria in which they cure. Are there other precautions that we can take to prevent bacterial infections? Antibiotics work by affecting things that bacterial cells have, but human cells do not. For example, human cells don't have walls, while many types of bacteria do. The antibiotic penicillin works by keeping a bacterium from building a cell wall. They kill bad germs in our bodies. Penicillins are, bact are antibiotics such as the mold of penicillin and amoxicillin. Different antibiotics are cephalosporins, such as cephalexin, cephalex, macrolides, such as erythromycin, and clarithromycin, and azithromycin. Fluoroquinolones such as afloxacin, levofloxacin, and olifloxacin. And sulfenamides such as cotrimazaxol and trimethoprim. Are there any good bacteria, and if so, name several types of good bacteria. Where are they found, and how do they help benefit humans? And can we live without them? Lactobacillus is found in the intestines, Bifidobacterium is found in the stomach. Bacillus coagulans are found throughout the body. They benefit us by performing various tasks that help keep us alive, and without them we could not survive.